It is a new year and as exciting as it is to always turn the calendar over and move into that new year, I'm even more excited than usual because just seeing how fast CSS is evolving right now is absolutely mind blowing. And there's a few things like custom selectors, custom media queries, nesting, and a whole bunch more. And while they're still in development, they're not supported by browsers yet, we can actually use these today thanks to the magic that is post CSS. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back to yet another video. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin. And here at my channel, I help you fall madly, deeply in love with CSS. And, and if I can't make you fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated when you're writing it. So yeah, I'm really excited about things like custom media queries. They're going to be really nice, but even custom selectors that I more recently learned about, I think there's gonna be some really interesting things and interesting use cases for those. But it's really cool that while those are coming and they're going to be things that are available to use eventually, I'm hoping crossing my fingers for it to being uh, in 2022. It's amazing because we can actually start using them now thanks to post CSS and more specifically the post CSS preset ENV plugin. And, and just one really fast thing before we actually jump in and start exploring all of these and what they are and how they work. This is actually something I joined Alex Tross for on a live stream he did where he raised over $10,000 for the Team C's charity. So that was a really fun event, but I had a very short time frame and I was sort of rushing through everything. So in this one, I'm just wanted to slow it down a little bit and explore a bit more of how all of it's working and go into a bit more detail on the different things and why I'm so excited about all of them. And as we're going to jump into the code, I just want to say I've put links to Alex's YouTube channel as well as his Twitch channel down in the description below. I'd strongly recommend that you check both of them out. All right, so we're here in VS Code. You can see I actually have two different style sheets that look identical right now, but we're going to be doing the magic stuff on this side that's going to be output on this side. And and as I mentioned, I'm doing this all with the magic that is post CSS. And more specifically, I'm using the post CSS preset ENV plugin. But I've already looked in a previous video on how to get up and running with post CSS, including adding in the post CSS preset ENV plugin. So if you want to see how to do that, I've linked that video down below. But if you just want to see the magic that's happening here and then check out that video after so you can experiment with it yourself, I'll also remind you at the end of the video uh, that that's there. And so just to show you, I do have uh, post CSS is watching this already. If I change this to red and I hit save, you can see it's changed there. And these are two different files. Uh, this is in my source file. This is in my dist file. And again, to find out how I'm doing this and how I'm getting it to watch that other video walks you through those steps. But what we're going to do now is set up my custom media. And while, you know, what we'd really like to do is go in our root and we have our custom properties here already, we'd want something like BP medium breakpoint medium and say 50 rem and use that within a media query, right? And then we'd want to take that and do an at media and do a min, uh, we don't want to set that, we just want to say breakpoint medium. And this, doing this doesn't actually work. And I think with post CSS actually, maybe it would allow me so, um, but in regular CSS, we can't do that. But what they want to do or what they're doing, this is actively being worked on and it will be here hopefully in 2022 uh, without needing post CSS or any other tools, but it's being able to do something like this and we have to do it instead of writing it like this, we write it with an at custom media. So we're using an at declaration to do it. But then interestingly enough, it looks very, very similar to what I've done here. And so what we do is up here, we do our, our the name of it and we do the double hyphen just like it's a custom property. So breakpoint. We'll say medium and then you don't do, we don't do anything like this, the colon or anything like that. We just write in the media query that we would want. So here I want a min width of 40 M and then I can actually remove this from here and let's hit save and we're going to see that it actually works. Min width of 40 M is coming, being output here with that card in there. So maybe a more realistic situation for this could be, we have this here, my card, and then here we have the dot card having a padding of two rem. Let's just say it's exaggerated a little bit, but you might get something like that where you're increasing the padding at a larger screen size. Uh, and of course, the nice thing with this is we could come in here and say my body has a font size of one rem, and then we could use the same media query. So let's just copy that to speed things up. Here that we have our body, and then the font size becomes a 1.25 rem. And we hit save and you can see there's my regular one and then here we get my body one that's getting boosted up and then you decide you want to change your media query breakpoint you make that 45 and this one and this one have both updated at the same time because custom properties are fantastic for these types of things and on a bit of a side note this has nothing to do with the custom media this is just a new way we'll be able to write media queries 
And it's actually sort of available within Firefox already, but not in the other browsers. Instead of writing things like this with a min width or max width, we'll actually be able to say width is greater than 45M. And that's going to give us the same thing. Or actually, you can see it's greater than, so it's 45.001. But we could do a greater than or equal to, and then we'll get a 45. And where this could be really useful is doing something like an at custom media BP medium only. Uh, where it's not medium and up, it's only for the medium screen size. So you want like a min width and a max width uh, point. So you'd say, say it's going to be 30 M. Uh, so if the width is greater than that, and then here we want 45 M. And let's try that one. I'll hit save on that. And I always muck these up. Uh, so that's if the width, yeah, I think this is gonna work. We're gonna find out in a second. Let's just do this one as medium only. And there you go, we got a min width between 30 and the max width of 40.999. And what's nice about this is it does make it easier to get those points where you don't get that awkward crossover where you have two overlapping media queries because you'd always end up with these 0.001s or these 0.9999s and stuff. So it's easy to get that or then just to throw the equals on there and get it to be the perfectly round number. So uh, I really like that. And this is, I think, how I'd actually set this one up. Now, one thing that's important is we're actually seeing how this is getting output over here as regular CSS right now, because Post CSS is taking this and turning it into CSS that our browsers can understand today. In the future, there's no processing that's gonna go on here. So this is actually what our CSS file would look like, and we'd never see this compiled version of it on the end, because we wouldn't need that. The browser would understand everything I'm doing here. So it is going to take some getting used to uh, along the way as well. And that's another thing actually here that will take a bit of getting used to is that we won't need to do our media queries like this either because we're gonna be opening the door up to nesting as well. And nesting with custom media to me is one of the greatest things in the world because I love nesting media queries uh, when I'm doing, uh, when I'm using SAS. So here, if I take this, and if you're used to preprocessors, nesting is gonna be very similar though there is going to be an important gotcha. Um, but what's nice with when you're using nesting with media queries is you don't actually need to redeclare the selector again. You just throw the media query in there. And I really like that because it keeps things a little bit more organized, in my opinion, um, because everything is just within that selector. Any style for my card is within that card. And some people might say it creates more code because you have repeated media queries. But honestly, with how browsers parse CSS files these days, and if you're compressing your CSS and gzipping it and that, the, the optimization that's happening there is pretty much nil. Um, so you don't even have to worry about it. So let's just do these two examples, hit save. And you can see here, my body, the, 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 the layout of it is a little weird, the, the indentation, but you can see with the bracket coloring um, that this is actually working out properly. So there's my, um, it's opening here and closing there. And you can see here too, my card and then the card over here on its own with the media query. And again, this is post CSS making it work for browsers today, but in the future, our browser will understand this and it won't need to be compiled into regular CSS. And if you're used to preprocessors with uh, like less or SAS with nesting that use nesting, uh, this is looking very familiar to you at this point. But one thing that's very different is people generally like nesting for the, the BEM syntax where you could come in and do uh, the and. And the and like this, let's just show you. I'm gonna do an and uh, each one just to show this actually first and then we'll get into the difference. Um, so say here, I say the color is purple. And so what that's doing is the, the ampersand symbol here is getting replaced by the parent selector up here. So it's becoming like dot card space H1. So this becomes a descendant selector. Uh, of, so it's my card H1 right there. And this can be super useful, but what's going to happen, and this is a little bit like preprocessor variables versus CSS custom properties, where the preprocessor variables are things that were pre-compiled. So you'd set your variable, but then it gets turned into static CSS. The ampersand eventually in CSS is not going to get compiled to anything. It's gonna stay like this, and the browser is gonna understand the nesting and understand what this actually means. And why that's really important is this becomes a bit of a live selector. And that means doing something like ampersand title, which you would use all the time with something like SAS, isn't actually going to work. And so let's just do my color pink here. Um, and 
we're going to see the is selector pops out here. So it's card is title. And obviously this makes no sense. And if you've never seen is before, I have a video on that. You can use that today without post CSS. So the, the card will pop up for that now. But the, the whole way that from what I understand that nesting is built on top of is taking advantage of the is in the first place. And it, it relies on the technology of the is selector. And so this will be something that doesn't work with regular CSS. Uh, and that also means it's not going to work with this preset environment set up like this, which is very interesting. Um, and I think it's going to change a little bit of how we write our CSS and even class naming and stuff because the BEM style is so popular uh, and it's not really supported in this method. But for me, that doesn't bother me very much because I could just do this <laughs> and let's get rid of this one. Um, so I could have my ampersand title and then it's the title inside of card. And sure, that's higher specificity, but you know, things like uh, view and svelte with the little style, you know, you get the scoped styles where you just put a style tag within your component and it's scoping all those styles there. And obviously you can do the same with React and it's, you're basing styles on something very specific in those cases. Well, now I'm styling my title that's inside of card. And I, I don't think the raised specificity on that is actually going to get in the way or cause any problems as long as you don't go crazy with your nesting. Um, I don't see an issue with this and I guess things might actually trend more in this direction once we have nesting, but we'll see what happens. Um, and you know, as, as this develops and as we get more of it, uh, but this also can be taken to another level because there's one more thing that I want to look at, which is the custom selectors. So let's say we come in here and custom as like before and before it was a custom media. Now it's a custom selector. The one thing that's really weird here is you actually start it with this guy. Um, so I don't know why I haven't read the spec too much on why it's a pseudo class because pseudo classes always have the hyphen. So it will be a pseudo class though. And then the double hyphen. So very strange syntax on this one. I won't lie, but it is what it is. And it's, this is part of the CSS spec. So it's how it's going to be uh, written. So I'm going to write headings. And then we just come here and write the heading, the selector we want. Uh, so in this case, h1, h2, h3, let's say. We, that's our heading selector and let's come here and we'll try and use it. So we do headings and then we can say here that we have, uh, let's say color is lime green because why not hit save. And if we go up, there we go. My H1, H2, H3, I'll get the lime green. And again, at the end of the day, we will not see this compiled CSS. This is just for now for post CSS is doing this. So the browser gets code. It actually understands later on. This is how it will actually look. Um, and this is kind of cool because you can easily select multiple ones. Um, and by having this as a custom selector, if you're only going to have the selector once, I don't think it really helps us at all, or it's not going to make things any better for you. But let's say we came into our card now, and instead of doing the title here, we do our custom selector and we say it's our headings. So now inside of there, it's my card H1, my card H2, my card H3 are all getting that color pink. And you go, well, I want that title class in there as well. You just come up to here and we can just add that dot title and hit save. And now we can see that that title has gotten added here and it got added to that original one that we set up all the way up the top over here. And there's even more you could do with this with like your is selectors and with nesting this inside of is selectors or we're eventually going to have the has selector as well. And there's, there's a lot of really exciting things that are coming in the pipeline. But one thing that's definitely interesting and I'm not too sure about is if you're somebody who's new to CSS or you, you just haven't you know caught up on all this, say you take a year long break through 2022 and all of this gets implemented and then you open a file that looks like this, you might just be completely, completely like lost on what's happening with things like this and like this. And there's this extra level of abstraction that's going to be added to CSS with all of these. And I'd like to know your opinion on that. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? So leave a comment down below to let me know what you think of that. Because looking at files like this, I definitely think it adds to the complexity of CSS and it can make it harder to understand and quickly read through a file. And one of the things that's always been great about CSS is how simple it is at its core and how simple the syntax of it is. But I do think the nice thing with this is these are things that you can level up with. So you don't necessarily, you know, once this becomes part of the regular CSS, you don't need to use them. You can just use them once you understand the basics and that's your next steps along the way. But I'd love to know what you think about it. 
And I just want to remind you that if you do want to check out that post CSS video that I mentioned on getting post CSS up and running and being able to play around with this and use it, all of these things today, as well as much, much more. And I look at a few other plugins uh, in that video as well. Well, that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to Adam, Johnny, Stuart, Tim, and Randy for being my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.